There are three proofs from scripture that you love God. Let me give it to you. Buttressing on the second point. Don't tell me, Apostle, I love God. Verify using these indices now that I'll recite for you. There are three biblical proofs. There might be many, but I found in my study that there are three biblical proofs that a man loves God. Are you ready? Number one, the first proof that you love God genuinely is that he becomes your priority. He becomes your priority. He becomes your priority. That's the first proof that you love God. He becomes your priority. Exodus chapter 23 to 5. He becomes your priority. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Listen, as beautiful as this song is, for many people, unfortunately, it remains a song. It is not a sincere experience. What is the proof that you love God? You want the latter rain to rest upon you? That end time anointing to come upon you? You want to be mightily used by God? You must love God genuinely and wholeheartedly. And the first proof is that he becomes your priority. 3 and 4 Exodus 20. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. Now look at this. When you read this scripture religiously, it's easy for you to feel you are free and you are guilty from this. But you will be surprised how many people have made the same mistake of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar created an image of himself and asked men to worship it. We still do that today as men of God. We still do that today as businessmen. It is very lucrative to create a statue of yourself. This time around it may not be made with gold and silver, but you edge it in the minds of people. Our pressure to be idols in the hearts of people is there is such a hunger, there is such a panting to be the idol of people. Thou shalt have no gods including yourself before me ministry can be an idol anointing can be an idol revelation can be an idol charisma can be an idol it's not only something you mold out of bricks and mortar it is not something you mold out of wood that cannot talk cannot speak and tie a red band around it no idolatry has graduated right now it has become a software that exists in the minds of people when I exalt myself more than Christ and I want you to remember me rather than Christ the celebrity mentality has eaten into the church eaten into us men of God eaten into business people our passion to be at the center stage you rather forget about God and remember Joshua Selman and because we spiritualize that idolatry we think it is right it is still idolatry you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are the first proof that you love God is that he becomes your priority second chronicles let's hurry up 15 12 to 15 second chronicles write that scripture down and please do not forget it second chronicles 15 12 to 15 and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart. You see the word all again. 
and with all their soul uh -huh, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great whether man or woman 14 and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting with trumpets and cornets and all Judah rejoiced at the oath. Watch this. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And my Bible says he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. God is looking for people who love him by making him the ultimate priority. Second, how do you know? that you love God are you ready obedience obedience is the second biblical proof that you love God obedience is greater than any sacrifice you will make Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12 obedience is the second biblical proof that you love God and now Israel what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all your soul. Say obedience. John chapter 4 and verse 21. I like that scripture. I found it many years ago and it's blessed me. 1421, my apologies. John 1421. It says, He that keepeth my commands, or he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. It says, And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him. And will manifest myself to him apostle I love the Lord with all my heart let me see your passion for obedience if obedience is found wanting your love for the Lord is found wanting are we learning so the first biblical index to measure your love for Christ is not just professing, not just verbalizing, not just singing, that he becomes your priority in truth and in experience. Exalted above ministry. Exalted above your pursuit. I wish that were true for many of us. But unfortunately it is not. He's not yet priority. And then number two, obedience. Number three, let's hurry up. What is the third biblical proof that you love the Lord? Are you ready for this? Love for the brethren. The third biblical proof, my God, is the church so wanting in this area, so guilty in this area. Love for the brethren. First John chapter 4 and verse 20. Shout it with me when you see it projected, please. First John 2, 2 4, 20. Ready? One to read. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother he is a liar one more time if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god whom he had not seen this is written in plain english there are many proposed lovers of god having such a growing disdain and bitterness and hatred one for another within the body in business in ministry the bible says you are a liar if you claim you love god and love and hate cannot coexist like that because perfect love does not just drive out fear it drives out anything that is not love hmm. romans chapter 12 and verse 10 love for the brethren it says be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another you want to show that you love Jesus you must love his body I cannot claim to love the head and hate the body if I say I love you it will be stupid of me to mean I love your hair or I love your head if you discover what I've been saying is that I love your hair, you will remove the hair and drop it and say, go and love it there. Because that hair is not me. Am I right on that? I love your wig. 
Oh, I love your Wivon. It's not the same as I love you. Huh? That's what many people are telling the Lord. I love the head. And that is because they have not met the head. By the time they see the head, they say, no, I prefer the body. I really hate the head. <laughs> are we together? You cannot say you love God whom you have not seen and yet hate your brother. Let me show you something. Love is a very powerful force. I have learned this as a man of God. I have learned this as a believer. The Bible says love never fails. And when I talk about love, I don't just limit it to emotional affection. Are we together? If you are waiting for pleasant circumstances that create connection, your love will not be genuine. Because the Bible says while we were yet sinners, undeserving, Christ loved us. Hallelujah. It is love that will make you to preach to somebody and you see that person and it looks like he will never be saved, yet you insist. It is love that will make you as a man of God to pay the price and labor, open your heart, teaching God's people the truth, whether you are rewarded or not. It is love that will make you wake up in the night while others are sleeping and you are praying and interceding for the people that God has brought your way. It is love that makes you to spend everything you have, your resources and your all. Everybody say love. A substitute to love is hypocrisy, religiosity, are we together? Psychophancy and all that are within that list. God is telling you that those who will receive the latter rain are not hypocrites. Not those who stand and say, I love you with hate and bitterness within their hearts. No. I hope you know that hatred is a signature of the presence of evil. Is that true? The Bible says, do not be overcome by evil, but it says, overcome evil, not with evil. You overcome evil with good. Eternally, evil is more, I mean, good is more superior to evil. It was love that defeated death on the cross. Love will always defeat death. Love will always triumph over hatred. Are we together? Ah, possible. But this one, just jump this. Oh, go to the third one. Let's round up. You don't know the situation around. I don't even want to tell you what who did what that person did ten years ago. The person slapped me in public, and I vowed that for as long as I'm alive, that hand must go. Look, let me tell you the truth. The man talking to you is not stupid. Love will always triumph over evil. Love will make you look like a fool for a moment. Love will make you look like you are weak for a moment. But step back and watch the power of love. Love raised Christ from the dead. Love crucified sin, Satan, death, hell and the grave once and for all. There is nothing love cannot do. You have tried hate and it did not work. Try the way of love. Apostle, but if I love people like that, people will take me for granted. When my head started getting hot, I started getting answers. Let me tell you the truth. Because I know Nigerians. Love is not as weak as you think it is. Maybe it is your definition. Are we together? I hope you know that judgment is still a subset of love. <laughs> so when I say love, maybe one day we'll teach on love. So that you will understand. Love has dimension. So length, breadth, height, width, all is love. But I can tell you, love will always triumph over hate. Hallelujah. Someone looks at you in the office and insults you and said, very dull woman, you were queried by everybody. I still don't know why you are at this work. And tomorrow you are going back to the same person again. Make up your mind that no matter what he or she says, you choose the way of love. Can I tell you, when you practice love, and you allow God to judge, you will even be the one to beg God and say it's too much. Most people don't know what love can do. See what God did to Satan. That blow that was dealt to Satan came on account of love. Every time you see weakness, be afraid of it because weakness is greater than strength. It was weakness that killed strength. Strength did not kill weakness. For when we are weak, then indeed we are strong. It's a mystery in the spirit. Are you learning now? 
because many of us have this pressure to show that you enter a restaurant and someone is eyeing you say you don't know me oh i'm a christian with a difference i will beat you here and still go to church that's how i kept quiet and people were looking down i've changed i'm not like that tell apostle i respect you i honor you but this one you i mean i will beat the living daylight out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, body of Christ. Now, wow. <laughs> Are we together? I will drop my Bible, tie my uh, this thing they do, and beat the living daylight. I'd go and ask God for forgiveness. But at least I'm satisfied that I've injured you. <laughs> Sometimes I put myself in the position of God. I just imagine that I'm sitting on a throne and watching my creation and seeing all the things that people do. Then in the evening, they are still crying unto him again. Lord God of Abraham, I say, hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. The love of God is at work in me. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. The love of God is at work in me. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You quote it every week. Now have it with understanding. The love of God and the koinonia, the fellowship, the sharing together of the Holy Spirit. It says let it be with you all. Amen.